As an e-commerce website owner, the easiest way to improve sales on your online store is by improving the customer experience on your online store. And one of the most common problems I see with a lot of WooCommerce store is the cart experience. The default cart experience inside WooCommerce is, well, uh, not ideal. You can add the cart element to your menu or some other pages, but when customers actually go to the cart page, it's not interactive, it feels boring, and honestly, it doesn't feel modern for today's day and age. But what if you could change all of that? What if you could replace the boring cart in WooCommerce with something modern like this? A slide out cart on your WooCommerce store. It's pretty exciting, right? Let me show you how to do that for free in this video. To add this modern experience on your WordPress website, we'll be using a plugin. And the plugin I'm talking about is called Cart for WooCommerce by FunnelKit. FunnelKit offers an exciting suite of products for WooCommerce and WordPress. They offer a funnel building solution, a complete CRM, email automation platform, a complete automation platform for WordPress and WooCommerce, and tons of exciting products that will be useful even if you're running just a WooCommerce store or a WordPress store or a combination of both. So I'll recommend that you check out FunnelKit from the link in the description. Make sure to check it out. And they have a free version or all the products have free versions and this plugin is also free. So this is called Cart for WooCommerce by FunnelKit and this offers the sliding cart solution that I was just talking about in the beginning of this video. So let's install this product on our website and we'll figure out how to configure it so that we can actually brand it and whatever options we have to customize. All right. So first I'll go to the admin section of my website and I'm inside the admin section inside the add new plugin section. So I'm inside plugins, add new. And here I'll just search for the plugin. I already have the name of the plugin, which is cart for WooCommerce by FunnelKit. Copy it on my clipboard. I'll just type it in and wait for it for search to complete and the plugin to be noticed here. And this is the plugin that I was talking about. This will do what we can install. And as I was mentioning, uh, FunnelKit has some other free plugins as well. For example, abandoned cart recovery for WooCommerce, Funnel Builder, and you can install these as well once you figure out if they are actually useful for your business or your website. I recommend, highly recommend FunnelKit. Make sure to install and check out all the plugins. For this video, we'll be sticking with cart for WooCommerce. This is what we'll install. Let's install the plugin, wait for it to install. We'll activate and I'll show you how to configure it. So the plugin has now been installed on my website and WooCommerce was already installed on my website. If you already have a WooCommerce site running, then you don't need to do anything else. Just install the plugin. If you're testing this plugin out on a demo website, you will need to install WooCommerce and import or add a few different products so you can follow along this tutorial. And you'll also notice that on the side menu, you have funnel kit appearing. This is where we'll configure uh, the different options for this flyout cart inside the cart options. Alternatively, you can also just click the settings and you'll reach the settings for this particular uh, section. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where you configure how the uh, funnel kit cart will appear, what content appears on it, how it appears and everything. I'll just talk about every single option. There are lots of different options and that's a good thing because then you uh, can, can fine tune how it actually appears on the site. So let's start with the basic. On the right hand side, you will see a live preview on whatever settings you change, which is great, right? Because you can visualize what changes you're making and how the flyout cart will look on your website. The first setting I recommend that if you're working on a live website, make sure that the cart is disabled, which means that uh, it's will the, just imagine that plugin is not active on your site. And why I'm recommending this is because once you configure all the settings uh, to your liking, only then I would recommend that you enable the cart. So all the settings where I'm going to talk about, you figure the settings out, you check all the settings out and uh, configure it or based on your brand and your website, and then you enable the cart. All right. That's what I would recommend. So right now I also have kept it disabled. So let's talk about different settings. Yeah, you see a lot of different settings. I'm going to talk about each of them very quickly. So inside the cart options, you have multiple options. Let me tell you what these settings are. So first option is icon visibility. Now, what is the icon? You don't see an icon here. Well, how it works on a WooCommerce website is that a floating icon will be added to your pages, either on the left side, on the right side. That's one setting you can configure. And based on that, uh, when the user actually clicks on it or if they add a product to the cart, the sliding cart can appear or disappear. So that's the setting here. The icon visibility, you can configure whether it appears on the entire website. That means all the pages just on WooCommerce pages or none of the pages. Now you can understand maybe WooCommerce pages, why it makes sense, but what about none? Well, in that case, you'll be able to manually configure where this floating uh, icon appears. So if you have a special case scenario where you have just a couple of pages where you would want to have this, you can do this. Otherwise, WooCommerce pages is fine. If you have a lot of content and a couple of product pages or a few product pages, but if you have, let's say, a very negligible content on your site and only product pages, you can also keep it to entire website. Then the icon position, you can keep it on the bottom left or the bottom right, wherever you prefer. I prefer bottom right. It makes more sense for me. Then you can also change the cart heading, which is this. So you can actually change this to your cart contains 
and you can instantly see the live preview. You can change it to whatever you like. Then hide cart icon. If there are no products inside the cart, do you still want the icon to appear? This is a setting that configures this. So right now it's enabled, which means if there are no products inside the cart, the icon will be hidden. I'll just disable this because when I'm demoing it, uh, you won't see this uh, if I have no products inside the cart. So I'll just disable this now. Then auto open slide cart. If you go here, you can also refer to the tool tips to understand what these individual settings are if you follow along or if you forget what it is. So once the product is added to the cart, do you want this sliding cart to automatically appear or do you want the users to manually actually click the button and open the sliding cart? I would recommend you should keep this enabled one uh, because a lot of users might not realize that they can click the icon and see the cart. So this is great when the users add anything to the cart, the sliding cart will appear and they can go back and continue shopping experience based on the settings we'll configure. Then you can also have coupon box field enabled. So if you recommend coupon, you promote coupons, you can enable this, which will just add a coupon field here where users can add coupons and I'd say use any coupons they have. Then you also have some additional options which open up. So you can have the display minimized or expanded as a default. So if it's minimized, users will have to click here. And if it's expanded, this will be the default setting. If you keep it minimized, it'll just be minimized. Then coupon box heading. So I'll just make it expanded for now. Got a discount code. This is where you configure this. Discount box placement text is what you configure here. Discount button button text, you actually configure here. So the idea is everything you are seeing on the slide out cart is actually customizable completely. So if you have a quirky brand, which has a special specific kind of copy that you write, you can actually change everything on the slide out cart. Then also on the cart summary, you have some additional options. Show subtotal, that means you wanna see subtotal or not. Display saving, you wanna see savings or not, or saving text. If I disable this, you'll instantly see how it affects the, or affects the slide out cart. I recommend that you keep this enabled. Most people would like to see what the total uh, is and whatever savings they are generating uh, on their purchases. On the saving text, you can customize this again, you saved or whatever you want to uh, want to configure. You can also have the shipping text appears. So you see this here, shipping and taxes calculated at checkout. You can actually configure this uh, free shipping or something like that. You wanna say, hey, free shipping above X amount of money or something like that. You can customize this here as well. Then on the checkout section, enable the button icon, enable cart price, enable continue shopping link. So all, are, all of these are easily to understand or easy to understand what they do. So this button icon actually disables this icon here. If I disable this, there's no button. If I enable this, there's a button here. Cart price, if I disable this, the cart just says checkout. But if you do this, the cart actually has the price showing up. And enable con continue shopping link, this is the link. If you disable this, there's no link. If you add the link, the link exists. So what these let you do is fine tune what is displayed, how it's displayed, which is great. And what the continue shopping text does, this is also you can choose. For example, let's say you just have two products on your site and when customers click uh, continue shopping, you want them to reach the shop page again. So in that case, you can say redirect to shop. But let's say you have a lot of different products and customers are adding products to the cart. You won't want people to actually go to the shop page. You would want them to stay exactly where they are. So in that case, you can just say close slide cart. So when users click continue shopping, the slide cart just goes away instead of them being uh, uh, redirected to something uh, or some other page, right? On the empty cart, if the cart is empty, what does the title say? Description, button text, link behavior. Again, these are uh, self-explanatory. If there's no products to the cart, what does the cart say? What the description would be? What the button would be? And what, again, what the link behavior would be? So in this case, let's say the cart is empty. You can actually redirect in the shop so that you encourage them to add some products to the cart. The simple idea that I'm trying to say, show you here is that it's completely customized. It's not a like a set and forget it. You can actually fine tune, which makes this plugin really powerful. And I'd say standing out from the other plugins that actually offer similar functionality. And this is just one section that we've just checked out. There are a few different sections that we can check out again. So inside the styling options, let's go to styling options. This is where we customize the, I say how uh, the cart appears. Right now we just uh, changed the content, but now we can change the styling options. So these are important to understand for I'd say a variety of reasons, but the customer experience. Uh, so make sure to pay attention on this section. So first option, cart preview desktop width. What is the width of this slide out cart on a desktop? The default is 420 pixels and I recommend you keep it that way. The cart preview on mobile width in percentage. So if uh, the default is set to 100, which means that once the users actually click the button, the 100% of the screen will be covered by the slide out cart. If you want to change the behavior to let's say 80%, so users don't get overwhelmed, they don't understand what's going on. 80% uh, means 20% of the screen will still be visible. So they'll still be able to understand that it's just a slide out cart and they won't feel that they've been redirected to some other page since they added something to the cart. So I'd say experiment with this and see what 
feels great for your store's experience. But I'd say 100% is only for, I'd say, a certain set of websites. I, I recommend something around 80%. Then you have all sorts of styling capabilities. You can change the background color, the button color, text color, te all the colors you see can be completely customized. For example, let's say my store has a, a lilac theme. So if I just go here and I'll, uh, I'll just try to guess the color lilac, how it looks, maybe something like this, and I can instantly change the background color. I can change the button colors to something, let's say a little more darker, something like this, and button text color, so I can change the color of the text. You get the idea. Everything you see here, primary text color, everything can be customized. And you can even change uh, what saturation the level is. For example, if I pick a nice hue, but I want it to not be as saturated, I can actually change it to 50%. And you can also have this do or this setup. So what you see here is not only are you able to fine tune the behavior of the sliding cart, also, you can change the content, how it appears, when it appears, everything, but also the complete styling of everything about the sliding cart, which makes it a really, really powerful plugin. And this is all for free, right? Fantastic. So what I'm going to do right now is just reset all these settings, which is great, right? If you mess up, you can always reset and you can reset it to the default values, which makes it easy for, uh, for following along the tutorial, right? But the idea is you can customize everything. You can also change the border color and animation speed. So how quickly do you want this sliding card to appear and disappear? You can experiment with different values. The default is 400 milliseconds. Let's say you can make it faster around 100 milliseconds is also fine. You check it out and you figure out what works. Then you also change the border radius and just notice what happens when I set it to something around 50. The button actually changes. So if you want to just make it a rounded button, you can change the border here. And you can also uh, have a fallback font family. So let's say you have a you're using a page builder and for some reason the font uh, is not loading on the cart then you have a fallback font that you can add here it's some kind of a pro thing that you can do more in most cases you don't, don't need to worry then you can also change the style of the icon so this is the slide out cart but as i mentioned uh before the slide out cart what users will see is something like this on the screen and you can customize how this icon also appears so the icon color is currently set to black let me just give you a demonstration by changing it to something else bright red color you can also change the background color as i mentioned you can change it something like this and you can also change the count color so what is the uh, typography here what is the background color of this you can all change everything here then you also have some different font options or not so font options icon options here so you click here and you'll see different icon options so whatever icon you think suits best for your uh, store you can use that you can also change the size of the icon and also the border radius so if i just make this 100 it's going to be a square icon oops no sorry not 100 zero it's going to be a square icon but if i change it to 50 it's going to be a rounded icon and the live preview just helps you understand what's going on. So again, if you don't like any of the changes you've made, you can always reset it to the default values, which is great in my opinion. And if you're a pro developer or if you have any kind of design experience, what you can also do is add custom CSS here. So if you think, hey, this is the setting I would like to customize. Where is the setting? You can use custom CSS to customize anything about this. So. All these options are available in the free version of the plugin. You also have the cart menu. Let's explore the cart menu. I'll explain what it is. But let me just check for a second if I have made the necessary changes on my website to demonstrate that. So I'll take a pause for a second on this video. Be back in a second and I'll demonstrate what the cart menu and how it works. So I made the changes on my website and now I can demonstrate the cart menu too. Let's go into the cart menu settings and talk about what the cart menu is. As I mentioned, the sliding cart, how it appears on your website is by through a button, a flyout button, which users can click and the slide out menu appears. But you have the ability to not use that altogether. If you go into the cart options, you have the icon visibility, which you can set to none. But in that case, what is the use of the plugin? How does the flyout cart appear? Well, the cart menu allows you to add the same functionality to your menu so instead of having the regular default uh, cart on your menu you can have this plugin add the cart to your website on your menu and then once users actually go to that cart option the slide out cart will appear so this is the behavior you can customize as well so if you want to use that first you'll have to use enable the cart menu and then you'll have all these options available again this will be added to your menu the primary menu or you will be able to select the menu i'll demonstrate how but you can customize the icon again so from all these options, you can select how it's going to look like. Let's say we choose this option, which looks great. You can have the product count uh, enabled or disabled. You can see it right here. Show cart total, enable or disable. The icon size and text size and pixel. You can customize how big or small it is depending on your site. And then 
you also have two different options to configure. The first one is a short code. So let's say you have a widget area on your site, you want to display it on a particular page, then you can use this shortcut and a short code and manually add the short code to the location where you want this cart or the button to appear. The second option is you can add it to the menu by default. So here, uh, if you have already have a menu on your site, you can click this and you'll be able to select the menu you want to add it to. So for now, the basic idea would be to add it to the main navigation menu. Once you do that, may pay attention that this will be added after all the elements. So oh, no matter what your menu is like, this will be added to the as the last element on the menu. And once that is done, what we can do is just save and then now our cart is done. Now, if you might be wondering about upsells and rewards, well, that's part of the pro version of this plugin, but let me tell you about what upsells and rewards will be. On the upsell section, what you will be able to add is certain upsells which will just appear on the slide out menu. So you'll be able to add products manually, which are best sellers on your website, so you'll be able to showcase the best sellers on your store as part of your flyout menu. So more users will actually buy it, thereby increasing your ticket size. It's a fantastic upgrade. Uh, I don't have the free version or I don't have the pro version, but you can definitely check it out from the link right here. And you also have the rewards option. And what rewards let, lets you do is give away something like your rewards. For example, you might have a, a free shipping offer on your website. Hey, purchase something uh, above $19 and get free shipping. These kind of messages is what you can add to the rewards section. So when customers are purchasing something, if the cart value is not $99, you can say, hey, purchase some additional uh, products to get free shipping. And with that, you can encourage users to, again, purchase more products and have higher profits or higher sales on your website. So these two features, upsells and rewards, are part of the pro version, but I just demonstrated that here. But rest of the features, the cart option, the styling options, and the cart menu are all available in the free version. And now, since we've configured everything, let's enable the cart and also save. So now the product is live or the feature is live. Let's check it out on a website, how it appears. So I'll click preview and page, which will just open up my website. And here I have products already added to the cart. I can just click it and the flyout menu appears. And also this button is also here, which I can click and the flyout menu appears. Fantastic looking and I can do everything on my site. I can just add the quantity. I can see subtotal. I can continue shopping, which will just close the menu. Everything that we promised I showed you is available live here. Fantastic product, fantastic, fantastic features. Make sure to check it out FunnelKit, the cart plugger pro plugin and all the different plugins by FunnelKit. I'll leave links down in the description. And if you watched the entirety of this video and you still haven't created an online store, then this is the video you should check out how to create an online store. And if you already have a WooCommerce store, learn how to create notifications for sale events happening on your website by watching this video right here. You're watching Yuraj from WBeginner. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.